Fox Broad. Showbiz Today is brought to you by Mum Champagne. We turn celebrations into historic occasions. Hello from New York. I'm Liz Wickersham. And I'm Lee Leonard. This is Showbiz Today Live, Wednesday, April 22nd, 1987. with Morgan Fairchild about our planet tonight. Actor Powers Booth tells us about his new film, Extreme Prejudice. We'll profile the heavy metal band Europe. And Peter Ustinov changes direction. And, uh, we brought it in, but it knocked me back. I haven't finished, I haven't recuperated yet. At the top of the showbiz headlines, the Big Apple was the place to be for stars, parties, and worthy causes. A very busy Cheryl Washington has been covering New York's happenings, and she filed this report. The Creo Society presented maestro Leonard Bernstein with the 1987 Albert Schweitzer Music Award for a life's work dedicated to music and devoted to humanity. The presentation, made by Schweitzer's daughter, was part of a benefit concert at Avery Fisher Hall. Bernstein's friend and actress, Lauren Bacall, was in attendance to assure the proceeds be given in memory of Bernstein's wife, Felicia Montalegra, for Amnesty International. At Regine's, a birthday party was thrown for the 72-year young actor, Anthony Quinn. The screen actor of countless movies celebrated the milestone with family and friends and revealed his secret for staying so young. I'm painting and sculpting now and I'm finding new ways of expressing myself and I just feel that I'm a kid uh, in sculpting and painting so I feel young. Quinn has maintained he has no intention of slowing down. Future plans include writing a book. Magic was in the air at the Court Theater as Sleight of Hand, Broadway's new suspense thriller, opened. In keeping with the show's magical theme, guests were requested to wear top hats. Although the official opening is May 3rd, the special preview brought out the likes of theater lovers and Magic fans, including L.A. Law's Corbin Benson, who donned my hat for the occasion. Carly Simon brought her kids to the show to hear her title song contribution. I'm, I'm all geared up for it. And Sleight of Hand producers are all geared up for rave reviews. Cheryl Washington, CNN, New York. A Vietnam veteran who had wanted to see the film Platoon but was unable to get to a theater because he was stricken with cancer died yesterday after having his wish granted through the help of Oliver Stone. Friends of Roy Rhodes had contacted the director of Platoon who responded with a videotape of the movie. Rhodes had called the film the closest that any movie had ever come to showing the truth about what went on over there. More and more we hear about celebrities doing battle with a serious illness and coming out about it to help and inspire others. Dirk Benedict of the A-Team and Battlestar Galactica fame has written of his struggle with cancer. Sherry Sylvester has our story. Fans of the A-Team know Dirk Benedict as face, but in Confessions of a Kamikaze Cowboy, he reveals his private war against cancer. Uh, it is giving much more to people than any performance in any television show or play or anything as an actor. I mean, that's all just entertainment. But to, but to share this is, is, is something that I only really shared with very few people. Benedict's solution was not only simple, but unconventional. He treated his prostate cancer with a macrobiotic diet of grains, brown rice, and vegetables. Actress Gloria Swanson introduced him to the food, now a way of life for Benedict and his wife, actress Tony Hudson. Complex carbohydrates, that is the key For the and complex the human being. That's right. The eating habits in this country are... I don't know the word, it's something insane. All the maladies, the problems, the headaches, the... It's all a result of that. ...was a blow to former colleagues on the venerable children's program, Captain Kangaroo. The captain and himself, Bob Keeshan, had this reaction. It's hard to believe because uh, we worked together for so many years and we were good friends. And it was difficult, you know, when we started out together, um, you know, we had to get up early in the morning and uh, it wasn't easy working at uh, 5 and 5.30. Everybody was entitled to be pretty grouchy, but uh, Lumpy was the family member that, uh, uh, that made it all work. He was the guy with the joke and the good humor. He was the most gentle man that I've ever known, a, a wonderful human being. In the Twilight Zone trial proceedings in Los Angeles today, Prosecutor Leo D'Agostino accused director John Landis of committing, and we quote, 
barbaric acts in her final arguments before the judge and jury. D'Agostino also suggested to the court that Landis and associate producer George Falsey Jr. kept the parents of two children killed in the crash sequestered in a trailer during a scene in which explosives were used because they might have pulled the kids out of the filming. The fatal crash occurred just hours after that scene and resulted in three deaths. Yesterday, the prosecutor compared the deaths to gladiators in ancient Rome who were sacrificed for entertainment. Attorneys for the five defendants will follow the prosecution's final arguments with their own, and after a rebuttal, the case will go to a jury. Still to come on Showbiz Today, our focus, TV language and behavior. What are the acceptable limits? Tomorrow, we'll talk to Ellen Burstyn about her new TV production, Pack of Lies. We'll have more Showbiz News, so stay tuned. For 160 years, it's been a great American tradition to celebrate with a great French tradition. Mum, the great champagne of France. We have a way of turning celebrations into historic occasions. Andy Kenyon reports. David and Mandy are fighting, but they are also challenging TV conventions, testing the limits between good taste and bad. Fine. Fine. Good. Good. Bitch. Bastard. Five or six years ago, we're, we're, you couldn't say some of the things that we've been able to say and, and some of the situations that we've been able to set up. Mark Tinker is a supervising producer of St. Elsewhere, a show which has dealt with AIDS, breast cancer, and a variety of other controversial topics. That's a far cry from the days when Lucille Ball was not even allowed to say the word pregnant on I Love Lucy. I think the language barrier is tending to relax somewhat. I think it is, in fact, also a response to the fact that the most ideal audience out there is being lost to some degree. Stephen Bochco's racy L.A. law attracts some of that ideal lost audience. It's made up of adults looking for more adult entertainment. Mature people who have often defected to less restrictive cable TV. As people accept more and more that this appliance does put out things, they're less discriminating against what a network may or may not do in the future. Hence the more risque language and more risque situations, even more risque ads. Ironically, this comes at a time when the FCC is cracking down on shock radio. Dan Brenner is a former staffer with that agency. I don't find this ruling to be in any way an indication that the networks are doing anything wrong. Uh, I think it's a reminder, however, that, that broadcasting is a broadcast medium. And there are clearly limits to what the public will tolerate. I approve most of the time. Sometimes I really wish it would be a little less vulgar. Some offensive language is just offensive to me. Maybe, maybe other people will enjoy it, so it's just a matter of opinion. I think whatever they want to put on for adults is fine, and I think it's up to adults to take care of their children. One company clearly agrees. In a bid to become a fourth network, Fox Broadcasting Company has refused to hire a censor, preferring to rely on the taste of those who produce and star in its shows. Sandy Kenyon, CNN, Hollywood. When showbiz continues, Peter Ustinov tells us all about his new role as a producer. Tomorrow, we'll talk with Dan Aykroyd about his other life as one of the owners of the Hard Rock Cafe. Showbiz Today brings you the latest entertainment news. I like to think twice about any offer, but his latest on- and off-screen role is one that's very close to his heart and his wallet. Bill Tush has the story. As Abdi Aga, an illiterate tyrant in 1920s Turkey, Peter Ustinov finds himself on screen in a project that began way back in 1963 when he was under contract at 20th Century Fox. And Darrell Zanuck called me in and said he would like me to work on it. Uh, before I could reply, there was a palace revolution and Darrell Zanuck was no longer there. When Ustinov finally did get around to it, he made some changes. I made out of it a kind of Western, or Eastern, uh, in which they didn't wear black hats or white hats, but kept switching hats, and eventually all wore gray hats. May I ask you a question? Of course. Why is there a flag in one of my villages? Where? Is that not Akhtozlu? 
<laughs> it's a mistake. Yes, you'd better stick that into Ankara. You're more liable to own that than you are Akhtozlu. You play sort of a, a villain, a bad guy, don't you? He's a villain until a bigger villain comes along. Mehmed Myhawk became almost an obsession for Peter Ustinov, who began as star, director, and screenwriter. Then, after he invested much of his own money, became producer as well. Yeah, so it was a heroic venture altogether. We worked on shoestrings, and uh, we brought it in, but it knocked me back. I haven't finished, I haven't recuperated yet. Now in the hands of an American distributor, Peter Ustinov hopes Mehmed Myhawk not only will be an artistic success, but a financial hit. Bill Tush, CNN, New York. And now back to Showbiz Today on CNN. These items in our data bank, the Fox Broadcasting Company has bid more than a million bucks for rights to air this year's Emmy Awards in September. The Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, which gives out the Emmys, had a rotating contract to broadcast the show on the three other networks, but that contract ran out last year. The Academy is considering all bids. A survey in Parents Magazine has found that in almost three out of every ten homes, children make the TV viewing choices for themselves. The telephone survey, which polled 1,012 adults, also found that 40% of those questioned felt that television had a negative impact and that children watch too much. But when questioned further, they admitted to watching even more than their children. And the final irony, a full 60% believe that most shows are not worth watching. Liz? Though we at Showbiz do not see it, some think that not only news and magazine shows, but anchor people can be easily parodied. And Morgan Fairchild is giving it her best shot tonight on Our Planet Tonight. Cynthia Tornquist reports. Morgan Fairchild stars opposite John Houseman in Our Planet Tonight, a spoof on television news and entertainment magazines. I think we're actually perfect for spoofing this kind of thing. Um, uh, since there's more and more written about how the, the news people, the anchors have to be beautiful if they're women and glamorous. I mean, the, the obvious follow through with that is to get somebody like me to be the anchor woman. A lot of humor to them. That's what I like doing. I like playing characters in a humorous sort of way, even if they're doing nasty things. And I think that is actually why the public likes them and remembers them. The roles may be memorable in the minds of viewers, but Fairchild is looking to move on. This has been a year where um, I've been sent a lot of sitcom scripts for pilots, and they're all just very derivative, and it's all the same kind of thing, and it's all family shows. And I think families are wonderful, but I'm not ready to play the mother of a teenager and stay in the kitchen baking pies. It's just not me. While it's certain Fairchild won't be baking pies in Our Planet Tonight, it's no guarantee she won't be throwing them. Cynthia Tornquist, CNN New York. And that's it for this edition of Showbiz Today. I'm Liz Wickersham. And I'm Lee Leonard. Good night from New York.